Welcome back. All right, so news of the day video for all you fine people on the internet for your Friday, April the 19th. We are, are right on the verge of playoffs tomorrow. I, I changed the live stream till tomorrow because today kind of ended up being a, a crazy day with uh, with an interview here with Global. It took about half an hour. And I needed a while to settle down, got all my boards done for the previews, got the previews done. Now a news video, so we'll be doing that tomorrow. Uh, before the playoffs start, because I feel like that's important because power rankings just disappear when the playoffs start. Uh, but yeah, and now we're doing a news of the day video for all you fine people on the internet. It's a full board, so let's just jump right in talking about, yep, yep, we're going to start off talking about the Coyotes. Uh, don't worry, the Coyotes talk is winding down, and if you're a Coyotes fan, it has to be eye-rolling at this point, doesn't it? So Bettman and Morello had a press conference together and restated that the plan is to bring the team back, and the team's gone uh, basically, the, the team's inactive, so Utah's technically an expansion team, but we still have 32 franchises, and then I'm guessing if Arizona comes back within five years, do, do they do like just an expansion draft and start over, or what happens there? So anyways, because uh, the team being inactive tells me that you can't really technically call it an, do you call it an expansion draft? Anyway, we'll see when we get there, if we get there. We don't know whether or not we're going to get there. Uh, but Morello saying again that he intends to win that land auction on June 27th. So from now until June 27th, we'll see how many times Arizona's in the news. Uh, but I'm not retiring the magnets as of yet, apparently, although the gold magnets will be getting put away. Uh, but the, the plan is that he's going to bring the team back. He's going to get this new entertainment district and everything with it. And the league has said they need 18 months of warning to know uh, about reactivating the franchise. So basically... If you're going to be ready to go in October of, say, 2027, they would need to be aware of that by, what, April of 2026? So, again, uh, the Arizona Coyotes, just a, a lot of uncertainty around what the future is going to look like for them. I totally understand fans being upset and frustrated with this entire process. I would be very frustrated as well uh, if this happened to, to a team that I cheer for, especially if it was the Canucks. And there was a time, way back when, when there was some discussion about how stable are the Canucks and are they going to stay? It was the late 90s. It was a different time. Uh, basically, almost every team in Canada was under threat of moving, with the exception of Toronto and Edmonton. Those were the two that were solid. Outside of that, everybody else was kind of like, so are they next? Like Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, are they next? But anyways, uh, so we'll see what happens with the Coyotes, but I'll be here to report on it when it does. Um, William Nylander could miss Game 1 versus the Boston Bruins. Uh, and, and again, we get so little information on injuries during the regular season. Do you really think we're going to get to find out whether or not somebody's going to play in the playoffs? Good luck. Um, Bobby McMahon's questionable as well. And uh, the Leafs were asked about, you know, the fact the Bruins haven't named their starter and they're not going to. Well, why would they care? Like, are the players going to come out and say, well, as long as it's not Olmark, man, he gives us nightmares. No, like, why? Like, I mean, they're not going to come out and say that they have an opinion because they don't care. And if you look at the numbers between Swayman and Olmark, there's there's not much to pick there. They're both pretty darn good goaltenders, and I would expect Boston's going to do a rotation. So we'll see. Uh, Pavel Francouz, this is not surprising. We kind of knew this was coming. Officially retires from the National Hockey League. Just lower body injury kept him out the entire season. And... He retires with a pretty solid record, played 73 games in the NHL, a record of 44-21-6, and, and a 9-19 save percentage. Absolute shame. I thought Francois was a good goaltender. It's too bad that uh, because of injuries, he was never able to realize that potential. So, um, yeah, it happens. It absolutely happens. Injuries shorten careers, and that's why I don't complain about how much money players make, because you never know how long you're going to be around in this game. Make your money while you can. Uh, so the St. Louis Blues, uh, while Drew Bannister could stay on as the head coach, uh, Doug Armstrong is going to put his search into action, and the plan is to have uh, a new coach in place by June. So uh, June, a, a big date for them, I guess, to have a coach in place. I don't have the Sens on the board for their coaching uh, search. The Sens said today, though, that, well, Steve Steo said today that Daniel Alfredson's not being considered for the next head coach. Uh, but there are numerous in, in that they're looking at and uh, talking about their draft and how they're looking for character and somebody's going to fit in and all that. So all the right things being said by all the GMs and teams that have missed the playoffs, but both Ottawa and St. Louis in the market for a coach. Uh, so uh, the Utah owner, Ryan Smith, is saying that 
Uh, they have over 20,000 ticket deposits, season tickets. That has to include half seasons, right? Because they only have like 12,000 seats. I mean, even if they, they, you know, change around the seating a little bit and if they sell like obstructed view, they don't have 20,000 seats in that arena. So if you might as well say they have 150,000 we have 150,000 paid season ticket holders and it's just first come first serve so there's gonna be a, anyway, i'm just kidding but uh, it it does sound like there's a lot of um interest in utah and and again you know i understand it's a small market but these are people that if you look at employment rates most of them have jobs um pay is pretty high in parts of the salt lake city as well uh, this this absolutely is a market that could support hockey. This is very different uh, than some of the other markets, but it absolutely could work. So it sounds like Utah not having a problem selling tickets. So while we have one fan base that's very upset here at losing their team, we also have fans that are very excited about getting a new team. Uh, so for Vancouver, I have bad news for Canuck fans. Uh, EA Sports released the results of their simulation today. So they got EA 24 going, NHL 24 going. Uh, there's simulation as the Canucks beating the Bruins in the final. I, I assume it's in 2011 mode or something. Back in 2011, the Vancouver Canucks were simulated to win the Stanley Cup in seven games. And they won all the games at home, and I, I think they lost all the games on the road in that as well. I think it was the same route that they traveled. And so there were some Canuck fans that really held to that. And, well, they're, they're going to win it because see the EA Sports simulation. And all I can think in the back of my head is, isn't that a video game? Yes. So no. Uh, but at any rate, uh, it, like that would be like me saying, look, I've played EA Sports many, many times, and I have, and I've won multiple Stanley Cups as the Vancouver Canucks. I would say at least three dozen Stanley Cups as a Vancouver Canucks team. So they're absolutely going to win it. It to me, it has just as much weight. It has just as much weight. Um, and there's a great sadness though when you play a play a video game and you take the team that you cheer for that's never won a championship to a championship. You go, wow, that looks great with them carrying around the championship. And uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to see that in my lifetime. So this is a bittersweet moment, uh, like in reality anyways. But uh, yeah, so EA Sports has them beating the Bruins in a seven-game final. Um, I would be very happy with a Canucks-Bruins final. I don't think it happens. I don't have the Canucks or the Bruins going to the Stanley Cup final personally. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, Ryan Johansson. So at the time he got traded to Philadelphia, the plan was that they were just going to cut him. And they couldn't. They couldn't cut him because he was not healthy. Uh, and it explains why his play in Colorado wasn't up to par. Uh, this is something Nashville fans kind of threw out there too when he got traded to Colorado, that he just didn't look right. And Johansson basically coming out and saying he doesn't believe he's fit to play hockey. Uh, Danny Breer does not think he's going to return and play again. So... Uh, he has one year left on his contract. That's why he's not going to retire. I often see people saying, well, why doesn't he just retire? Well, why should he? He's got millions of dollars coming to him. He's hurt. So he's not saying, I'm, I'm not going to come back and play because I don't feel like it. He's not coming back because he's not. He's just not physically capable. So why not You know, just make that last year's worth of, of money on your contract? That's what LTIR is for as well. So... Uh, all the best to Johansson. Hopefully he can find a way to rehab and maybe come back. But the one thing you have to have to keep an eye on too is that a player has to keep uh, keep at least part of their mind towards life after retirement. You don't want to end up in a situation where um, you're not going to walk right the rest of your life because of, of playing hockey, where uh, you're going to have a lower quality of life because you, you fought through all these injuries and you played when you shouldn't have. So... All the best to Johansson. We'll see if he does come back. But usually when a GM comes out and says, yeah, we don't think he's going to play again, usually that is is the end for the player. Um, speaking of which, Chris Letang, and this sounds like it could be more serious than what it might be on the surface. And it reminds me of Shea Weber. It kind of reminds me of Shea Weber just in the way that some of this is being worded. Letang apparently played hurt all season, dealing with various injuries and, and just not being 100%. Uh, the team is making making it known that it's his decision on how to proceed, which to me sounds like he can decide whether or not to have surgery for the injury he's been dealing with, whatever nagging injury that has been going on with him. So I have full respect for the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins for you know deciding it's up to Latang. We'll see what he decides to do. Uh, Latang, of course, has, has got a pretty long injury history and everything, and so um, your guess is as good as mine about what exactly that nagging injury could be. 
Uh, but all the best to Latang and whatever he decides to do. Penguins clearly going to support him. Uh, Penguins are in an interesting interesting spot in that, again, really, really close to the playoffs, not quite a playoff team. In the offseason, do you try to get over the hump, get back into the playoffs, or not? Also, Kyle Dubas uh, stating, and this is kind of goes without saying, that uh, he does want Sidney Crosby to retire as a Penguin. So at the end of his current contract, uh, should he decide to keep playing, the plan is for him to stay in Pittsburgh. At least that's Dubas' plan. We'll see if Crosby's plan is different. I don't see any reason why it would be. But uh, he wouldn't be the first player that we've looked at and said, well, he's never going to get traded. He's never going to play anywhere else. And then they do. Uh, so we'll see. But Latang hurt all season. Hopefully he can get that straightened out in time for uh, the start of next season. Jacob Markstrom. So we remember at the trade deadline how Markstrom wasn't very happy with how everything went down with Calgary and all the rumors and all the rumblings. Um, still, and he said he doesn't have a strained relationship with, with front office, but he's still not happy about how this season played out. Uh, talked about how he, he would like to win. He wants a chance at the Stanley Cup, uh, which could be seen as a sign that he's going to be on the move. Uh, press asked him as well about whether or not he might get traded to New Jersey, and obviously he can't answer that question. Uh, what's he going to say? Is he going to come out and say, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm already, I'm, I'm ready to go. I got a devil's jersey right here in my bag. I'm glad you guys asked. No. Um, but for Markstrom, it's, it's been a tough season for him because he played really, really well. If you look at the advanced stat numbers, Markstrom was one of the best goalies in the league. Uh, the team in front of him was not. So for Markstrom, uh, he needs to either, you know, be on a Calgary Flames team that's better. And I don't think the Flames are necessarily that far off. Uh, but that being said, back-to-back -back years outside of the playoffs, and it does feel like they're going backwards rather than forwards. We'll see. Uh, but Markstrom's future with the team, at the very best, is uncertain. Uh, at the very worst, it, you could argue he's got one foot out the door, but we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Yarmir Yager, 52 years of age, and has officially become the oldest player ever to play professional hockey. Uh, passing Gordy Howe, and this is a regular, like, playing uh sort of hockey thing because Gordie Howe did come back at age 69 and play one shift for the Detroit Vipers in 1997 but that's not really the same thing that's he wanted to play in the 90s he wanted to say I played in all these decades and uh there he I, I believe at the time he wanted to play for Detroit but the Wings couldn't find a way to make that work uh so yeah the oldest pro player now is Jeremy Auger he officially passes Gordie Howe is the oldest man to appear in a professional hockey game. And uh, all the best to him. All the best to him and uh, and his continued uh, career, whatever it might bring. Whether it's still, you know, helping his team in Cladno, off the ice, or whether it's on the ice. Uh, all the best to Yager. But he has been playing for a long time. So when anybody asks, why isn't Yager in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, because he's, he's still playing. So he's never officially retired from the National Hockey League either. And uh, all the best to him. I, if, if you told me, you know, he could play till he's 60, my answer would be, yeah, he might. Uh, and nothing but respect for him because, yeah, as you get older, it's harder and harder to, to stay in shape. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always, about any of the items on the board. Uh, we are getting back to that time of year where the news videos can get kind of packed like this. Uh, there'll be, I'm sure, other retirements, probably other coaches being dismissed, coaches being hired and likely more and more news on the new team in Utah, which again, it sounds like won't have a, a team name. So just Utah Hockey Club uh, might just be using generic NHL magnets for goal magnets for them next year. The good news, I got tons of them, absolutely tons of them. So uh, I'm set on my end. Uh, we'll see how things are on the NHL's end and what goes on, but I'll be here to report on it when it does. Uh, I'm also going to the Abbotsford uh, game tonight. So with Hanzek making his pro debut with the Calgary Wranglers, I'll be seeing them tonight in Abbotsford. So that'll be fun to watch. So uh, I may even do a little video after that game. I haven't decided yet. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to tune in to the live stream tomorrow where we will do the final power rankings before the postseason officially gets started. So nice thing was a reporter and a camera guy here and they didn't turn around and take a picture of the, the power rankings and send it out to everybody. So I, I, they noticed it. Power rankings boards right there with all the logos and the order and everything. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to revealing that tomorrow. Uh, and then, then it's, all, it's all done for the season. Uh, the next power rankings would be in August. So stay tuned for that. That's 
going to be done while we're while we're in Vegas. So because we we do the Vegas holiday every August, why change it? We're we're going to go back to Vegas in August. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for all your support as always. If you haven't already hit, already hit like and subscribe, please do. Subscriber numbers this time of year are always uh, pretty high, and and over the last few days, no different. There's been a lot of new subscribers, so if you're new to the channel, welcome, and stick around. I will talk to you guys again soon.